uh, how can you justify the 20 percent cut in Social Security disability if there is adequate funding uh, in the retirement fund? And so what they're referencing, those who don't know, is uh, the Social Security Disability Fund will reach an insolvent state uh, very shortly, and there's a discussion going on about how we deal with the question. Uh, Ellen, if I'm reading Ellen. correctly, if I'm reading correctly. Ellen's still here? Okay. So the question is, why is there a potential cut of 20% when there's not For money? For us older people, yes. Yeah. Well, this is something I was concerned about approximately starting about two years ago uh, when we saw this issue coming down the horizon. Uh, I sought this issue out uh, because looking at the Disability Trust Fund two years ago, we all saw it was on the path to insolvency. And we were looking at this 20% reduction in disability uh, payments to people that are relying on disability. Um, millions of Americans that rely upon this. So I went to Jack Lou, Jack Lou, our Treasury Secretary, two years ago when he came in front of the Ways and Means Committee. And I said, look, it, I read your testimony last night prior to you coming in. I read the President's budget. And I said, what are you going to do about this impending crisis coming down the pipeline? Not one word mentioned in the testimony, not one word mentioned in the budget of how they were going to deal with it. So my concern was, Mr. Treasury Secretary, what are we going to do? And I kept hammering them on for the five minutes that we had the question uh, period to ask the question. At the end, it came out, and I got them to say the official White House position was is they were going to take from retirees of Social Security and move over $270 billion into the Disability Trust Fund to take care of the disability recipients. To me, anybody who runs a business, what is that? Robin Peter? It's a good idea. Right? It's the best idea. It's not the best idea because you're taken from retirees, Social Security retirees, where Social Security already has, you look at any actuarial report that's out there by the Social Security trustees, it is already on a path to insolvency in and of itself. So why would you take from Social Security retirees money that they put in to take this shortfall in the Disability Trust Fund and use the money to patch it in? Second. One of the things, one of the things that I was also concerned about is I said, I kind of saw a conflict, if you would, in federal government policy about two years ago. You have the American with Disabilities Act. And I have talked with numerous folks uh, that are in the disability community. And one of the things that the American Disabilities Act has done in a great way is to mainstream the disability community. You know, allowing disability uh, children to go to school and be mainstreamed. Then you look at the Disability Trust Fund. And what happens in the Disability Trust Fund? You are essentially told you have to be permanently and catastrophically disabled, else you will lose your benefit. In the 21st century, why can't we do a better job of saying if someone has a capacity or a willingness or a want to go back to work, to go back to school, why don't we develop a system that stands with those individuals? And I was willing, and I've already said it publicly, I'm even willing to allow some of those individuals to double dip because there's this big concern on the conservative side about double dipping. Well, I'm telling you, if you're going back to work, if you're earning a paycheck, and you happen to double dip to the tune of $2 to $1 or something like that, we stand with you and say, that's good. And that's what we want. So we are advocating for reforms in the disability community that reward or stand with those individuals that are doing that. So this is an opportunity to do something People better do it now. than just Robin Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, Congressman Reed, I really have to Please. respectfully disagree with what you have done by changing the rule. This is the trading of funds between the trust funds for the disability have been done numerous times. Eleven before. times. Eleven times before. And it wasn't just, it just wasn't from Social Security right. retirees, from the and Medicare so health insurance. And so you are creating a false crisis, putting people who are permanently disabled at a, facing a 20% cut on a meager benefit, and this is outrageous, and it represents like some 20 some thousand if not more in your district of people who you're going to cut their only means of support by 20 percent because you've created a rule and you've created a false crisis because what would happen here is 
the Social Security Disability Trust Fund is due to not become insolvent, but to only pay out 80% of its benefits in 2017. In a year and a half. You're going to allow that to happen when, if you took the money from the Social Security, all it would, would diminish that trust fund to, uh, you know, 2031, which is at 2032 now, and raise the disability trust fund up to 2031. And if there would be no problem for anyone until 2031, and you could easily address this by raising the cap on the Social Security who are in your income bracket pay less than I do as a percentage of my income, and that's not fair. That's and there will be no crisis in Social Security, and you have now created the crisis, and you were the leader of putting this rule change in, so you are personally responsible for cutting everyone's disability payment by 20%. And I say shame on you for doing it. That is absolutely no. true. What I'm trying to do no, and, is and address people this who are issue. Disability because let's put money. it in perspective. Let's put it in perspective. I oh, am. Yeah. So what we're saying <laughs> is federal government, you can't take care of a $270 billion problem with the disability trust fund, so you need to punt it to 2031, right? Well, no, you're saying by raising oh, the right? 16 years. That's, that's you, right around the corner. You mean nobody's going to think about this for 16 years? That's what they did since last time they dealt with this issue. No, they, they said they were going to take care of it in the mid 90s. They were going to take care of it in the mid 90s. And what are we waiting for? Treasury Secretary Lou coming in front of me two years ago saying, we're not going to do anything about it. Because they've always do done this and it was, yeah. it's been well, safe for everyone. I'll and not penalized. And, and that's what the U.S. U.S. Office of the Actuary told you this. Well, right. Raise the cap and no crisis at all. Yeah, because too many old people are retired. Just so we're clear. Just so we're clear. So you're punishing. You can't take care of a $270 billion problem. What are you going to do to the disability folks that are going to be dealt with in part of that $3.6 trillion You're claiming that you're caring about the disability. Ability. You are pitting seniors not. against the disabled. Exactly. You are creating this. And they're the same people. Oh, right. <laughs> this is outrageous that you can defend this. That you're punishing people who are disabled. I think we owe it to the disability community to do better. And I believe we owe it better for the retirees than Bob and Peter to pay Paul. That is so raise the cap. Raise the cap then. Scrap the cap. Hey, everybody now, here, get Social this. Security works. The book. It's a little pocket book. Get it, read it. That'll tell you everything so you need. Because everything he's I'll saying is a lie. I want to talk about that. Because the cap, I've been, I have said, away, we can discuss removing the cap. But what a lot of people don't talk about is what are you going to do when you remove the cap? What are you going to do about the benefit calculation? The, the benefit that's calculation? That's, that's, what do you mean? That, the that's cap should be set at $250,000. Yeah, really. well, if it's in order insurance. to take care of insurance. It's okay. insurance. When you it pay isn't. insurance on your house, if your house doesn't burn down, you don't go get the money back. How right. is Social Security? How is the Social Security benefit calculated right now? It's based on what you put into it. Right. Okay. Yes. So but take there is a cap on that. Say you well. remove the cap. <laughs> you remove the cap and you say to the person making a hundred trillion dollars, just to be extreme about it. What we're going to do is going to keep the same benefit calculation in effect. Right. What have you done? You've created more money coming in, granted, but the hundred trillion dollar benefit that needs to go out no. has to be taken. Cap it at two hundred and fifty. It's an 